Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? This is Alex Bennett, and yes, this be the Ramble. Here we are tonight with yet another Ramble, ready and willing to go. And speaking of willing, uh, here's somebody whose name is uh, is close to that. Okay, okay. And now we wend our way out to California. And look at that lovely visage of Will Durst. Hi, Will. Uh, you're wending your way westward. Wending my yes. way. Yes, hi. Hello, w East Coast. How are you? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, hello, West Coast. You know, when I was a kid, I was amazed because they did a show called, there was a Sunday show. Maybe it was Omnibus, but I don't know if it was. Uh, but... They had a special, and what they did, it was the first transcontinental broadcast. Oh, wow. In, in which they showed the East Coast and the West Coast at the same time. Same time, wow. Live. And, that is, that's pretty impressive. And, and they showed, I think, the Golden Gate Bridge. Ah. Right? As the West Coast and as the East Coast, uh, I guess they showed, I don't know, probably Donald Trump at that time. Anyway, uh... Drumpf. Uh, it, it, it was, to me, one of the moments I remember as a child of just being in awe of the fact that we could see both coasts split screen at the same time. Now we just do this every couple of weeks, you know? I love the fact that when they use uh, the West Coast, as you're right, as you said, that they always, the, the immediate iconography for the west coast will either be the hollywood sign yeah golden gate bridge right one or the other yeah yeah and i'd prefer it be the golden gate bridge because it's more beautiful than the hollywood sign yeah the uh although the lucas museum may become uh i don't know if you saw uh the design the architectural no. design where are the, they gonna uh, the where, they, where are they gonna build it uh, next to USC. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. in L.A. Because he tried to get it in San Francisco, and they said no. And then he tried Chicago, and they said no. So he finally. Why did they LA. say no? Yeah, they're idiots. I know that it's idiotic. Why they would even think of saying no to something like that? Oh, it's it's people who think they know art, and oh, you know, he's not. He's just a movie director, and he's going to Disneyfy it, and. He's probably got a couple of posters because he wasn't showing them yeah. his collection. You know, he was yeah. at, yeah, I'm not going to show you the collection. Well, well yeah, you know, try. you know what happened in, in uh, it, it, with Lucas has always had this problem. And one of the big problems that he had was back in the old days, uh, he um, uh, tried to, he wanted to build Industrial Light and Magic. And he already had, uh, Lucas Visual or whatever it was in San Rafael. Lucas Valley Road, and, right. And, 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 no, no. In San Rafael, he had what it was called. It had a sign on it said Kerner Optical. What it was was Industrial Light and Magic. Oh, Kerner Optical? <laughs> yeah, it was on Kerner Street. And so he wanted to build his huge facility in San Rafael, and they turned him down. So that's why he went out to Lucas Valley Road. Now people say, "Oh, it's on Lucas. It's on Lucas Valley Road." Ah, he must have had it named after him. No, it was always Lucas Valley Road. I remember driving that as a kid, right? And he just put plopped it down in the middle of uh, of, of uh, upstate uh, up the road, Marin, and San Rafael didn't get all the uh, all the jobs and the money out of it. Yeah. You know, and then uh, let's see here. Uh, so now he wants to build a, a museum, and they won't take him in San Francisco. Fuck you. You know, exactly. Why didn't they want it? Too much traffic. No, a lot of reasons. He he didn't have this design originally. There's a great story in Vanity Fair about it that I just read. Yeah. yeah. He didn't have uh, this or design 
and they told him originally that they want that they wanted for that space in the Presidio with a view of the Golden Gate Bridge that they wanted an olden timey museum look. So he hired an architect and gave it an olden timey museum look. And then they said, no, it's too old and timey museum for that space. <laughs> well, he already has this huge amount of space uh, where the hospital used to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in uh, uh, Letterman it's General it's Hospital. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and he took that space and built basically Lucas Digital. And it's a beautiful facility, so they shouldn't have minded him going into the Presidio for another thing, you know? It was, it was a different group. It was a group of art curators and people on boards of the Presidio Trust, darling. And it was uh, rich people who thought they knew more and he might not have paid the proper respect. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. And, then, and then his wife is originally from Chicago. Yeah. And so she said, oh, let's go to Chicago, because I know Rahm Emanuel, the mayor there. Right. He was all excited about it. And he said, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. And then the same thing happened. You know, the people turned against it. They wanted to put it on the lakefront in Chicago. And there was people who have, like, this lakefront, you know, preservation society. And they said, no, no, you can't have that. And. And then he just went down line. Who wouldn't want a Lucas Museum? I know. <laughs> I know. There are some stupid people in this world. No, it's it's egos. You know, it's, it, it, it's, everybody's got to play their little games, right? Yeah. There's that old joke. You know, why is a uh, university uh, faculty politics so brutal? Because so little is at stake. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Well, anyway, you know, I uh, uh, all I remember is that whole story about how he he wanted to, you know, build a, a part of the problem. Also, he when he was filming, um, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, American Graffiti? Oh my God! He did it on Fourth Street in San Rafael, and after the second night of shooting, they kicked him out of San Rafael, and he had to go. He finished it in Petaluma. Ah, yeah. So I ha part of that film, they turned the block and it's Petaluma. <laughs> you know, but again, it was Sam Rafael being assholes, and so he just has, he he, if as a matter of fact, threatened to pull Industrial Light and Magic out of Marin altogether, and take with it the I don't know five thousand or so odd jobs that uh, that uh, people have there. Much less a tax base. Have you ever been to Skywalker Ranch? Never. Oh. Wonderful! It's just wonderful. I mean, it's he built it like uh, uh, there's an old, uh, you know, uh, old-fashioned Victorian house on the property, and then Lucas Sound is a winery. You know, it's a winery barn with the the grapes growing outside, and there's a big lake in the middle of it. And Lucas, uh, the uh, what I guess we'll go into the museum, the archives. We're on the other side in this big giant stable, and he then he wrote this whole history of the ranch. It supposedly goes back to 1850 when a sailor came home from the sea and started this ranch, and they have this whole backstory for the ranch. <laughs> and at night, uh, they can uh, hear the sound of the uh, the mountain lion that lives on the property. Ah, uh. yeah, they they uh, you know he has his own fire department. Which serves the whole area, not cool. just his ranch, but he built his own fire department to to take care of that. It's a wonderful place, just a wonderful place. And then one of the things that really amazed me was uh, I I went to lunch there, and then I started. You can walk around the house. He'd let you walk around the Victorian, and I'm looking at this big case, this big display case, and there is Indiana Jones's whip. And his hat, and the you know the idol that he takes, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. am I in awe of that? No. What I'm in awe of, he somehow I don't know how he did this. In silent movies, there were a thing called the Keystone Cops. They were a comedy group of about I don't know maybe eleven, twelve 
Mag Senate. Yeah. Mag Seven Senate. They were called the Keystone Cops. You know, and they were just goofy cops. He had all the badges from the Keystone oh, yeah. Cops. That oh, wow. just I was in awe of that. How he that, even fought to that get is that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So I mean, it's a wonderful place. This is a wonderful place. And they kept, they always kept giving him a bad time when he wanted to add on to the ranch. They said he couldn't have more than, he couldn't have more than a certain amount of people. He couldn't have more than about 300 people working on the ranch at any time because they didn't want to ruin the ecology of the area. And yet he was doing everything he could to preserve the ecology of the area. There was nothing there that was intrusive to the to nature. It was all folded into nature. He just hates Marin County. Just I don't blame him. And he, he gives that county, as I say, about 5,000 jobs between, uh, uh, well, I, I guess uh, Industrial Light and Magic isn't in San Rafael anymore, but they were there. Lucas Digital was on Highway 101. That's where they had all their games and things like that. And then you had Lucas Valley Road with Industrial Light, you know, with uh, uh, the ranch. Skywalker What's in ranch. the Presidio? The Presidio. Presidio, what he did is he is he moved a lot of his stuff into the Presidio. Basically, yeah. it's called Lucas Digital, and I mean that's pretty uh, yeah, much that's what, what that's where Industrial Light and Magic works out of now, I think. But it's it's a beautiful property. He's done a nice job with it, and a big statue of Yoda. You know. So. Oh well, what the hell? With a screening room. Huh? And sometimes, sometimes uh, the Academy, like when it shows. Uh, uh, yeah. The screening room. Uh, sometimes, when it shows films f that are being nominated for the Screen Actors Guild, yeah, they they get his permission to use it. So I've been I've been to the the screening room, but that's it. And that's in Lucas Digital. That's in the Presidio. Yeah, I used to go. You know, I used to go. They used to have showings at the Dolby. Theater. Yeah, yeah. And this is a theater that Dolby has to test their yeah. sound. So they always had state-of-the-art sound whenever you went there. It was, like, amazing. Just amazing. But you probably can't get there now because of the traffic, so what the fuck. No, it's on, they moved from Petrero. Now I think they're on Market Street. I think Dolby is, is right on Market Street, like uh, 9th or 10th. You know something? You've got to think about it. How long has that company been around now? Dolby, yeah. Yeah, and still as important as they've ever been. You know, they've just kept ahead of the curve. I noticed they have a thing called Dolby Vision, which is what... Uh, Dolby Vision. Uh, uh, Dolby Vision, which is what uh, uh, the high-def, the 4K versions of film sometimes are shown in on, uh, uh, on uh, I think maybe it's uh, Netflix and, uh. or Amazon or whatever. And it's uh, yeah, it's uh, and and, uh, and it's amazing. It's amazing. What are you watching these days? I just watch. I'll tell you what I bought. I bought a restored version of the movie Oklahoma. And you're going to say why? No. I know you have that look of why. Uh, uh, of Oklahoma. Uh, the reason being that was shot in two, two. It was shot twice. Once in Todd A O which was a new large format screen process at the time, and the other in CinemaScope. And they would do one scene, and then they would set it up again and redo it in CinemaScope. And then they would with do it in Todd A.O., and then they would do it in CinemaScope. So everybody said, if you can ever see the Todd A.O. version, it's spectacular, and the performances are better because they're not as exhausted by the time they got to the CinemaScope take. And they were right. I got the Tadeo version. They have the Tadeo and the Cinemascope all in the same the, the album. Criterion collection? No, no. The 20th Century Fox. It is the most gorgeous print I've ever seen on Blu-ray. I mean, no. it is just, if you can get, it is just stunning. And I have some 4K sets here. It just pops. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. And then you go over to the Cinemascope one, and you go, eh. <laughs> you really? know, eh. And, and which one was released? Uh, uh, both. Uh, they did the um, uh, they did the Todd A.O. for reserved seat only theaters where they had the Todd A.O. equipment installed, which was uh -huh. seventy millimeter and so on, uh, and running at thirty frames per second. And then they 
for the rest of the country because they didn't want to limit its distribution. They released it in Cinemascope around the country. So if you were in a major city, for instance, you could go see it. San Francisco ran it in Tadeo, I remember. Yeah. And that was one of only two films officially made in the original Tadeo format, the other one being Around the World in 80 Days. So, Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, by the way, folks, if every now and then I'm dabbing my eye, but my allergies have just been... In fact, this eye... Oh, no. What is over here? What is that schmutz I've got there? I don't know what that is. That's just a bag. Uh, this eye is just watering all day. Does it look uh, kind of... It looks a little droopy, yeah. A little droopy. Well, I'll, I'll put on the glasses. There you go. I can't tell now. Now you can't tell. Now I can't. Anyway, uh, how how are your allergies out there? Are they? Uh, Debbie's going through um, extreme sores, but I'm okay. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I'm yeah. Wait, you're not Jewish. Jewish? Where do you get to use a word like sores? Well, I uh, give you I give you permission. Yeah, I'm I'm unofficially Jewish. You're unofficially Jewish. So, uh, what do you think of the world around us? You know, that's why I call you, and then we get to talking about uh, Lucas and movies, and now we got ten minutes left to just wrap up the whole world. <laughs> you know what made me mad today? I turn on the news, okay, and what I want as my first story, okay, are the kids in Thailand. They got them all out. They got everybody out. I think it's pretty amazing. I think it's pretty it phenomenal. Um, I remember when I was a kid, there was a uh, little girl in a well. In a well. A girl in a well. Yeah. And we were all like, she died. But we were oh, all. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, was her name Kathy Fiscus? Well, how do I remember that name? You know, yesterday I went to a doctor. I'm really bothered by this. I went to a doctor for neurology because I have no, these numb feet. And I wanted to find out what it was. Yeah, that ain't no good. Well, he says it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a form of spinal stenosis, and he's not, nothing go to go. Physical therapy will t help it. Okay. Anyway. How about but acupuncture? He, but he gives me some tests and stuff. He asks me some questions. How old are you? What's your, where do you live? Things like that. You know? And then he says, who's the governor of New York? And I completely freeze up. I can't remember. It's Cuomo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Andrew. Uh, yeah, he said, "Well, and who's the mayor of New York City?" De Blasio. I couldn't remember. Oh, really? Yeah. Now I think one of the reasons I couldn't remember either one is I pay more attention to national news than I do to local news. <laughs> no, really, I don't read the local newspapers, don't watch the local news. So I, you know, that's maybe why I froze up on it. I may have frozen up on it because I've got Alzheimer's. I don't know. He didn't find these. Don't worry about that. He says, Who's yeah. the governor of California? Governor of California is, of course, Jerry Brown. See, <laughs> you're still living here. Well, because. <laughs> Because I know him. You know, he was a friend, you know. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did the show, and I went over to his place for dinner and stuff, and I, you know, it was good old Jerry, you know, I over and over. a couple times. Yeah. He's got a sense of humor of an end table. Yeah, but he's a nice guy. He's a decent he is, guy. Yeah. Decent guy. Uh, and and uh, Gavin Newsom will probably be the new governor. Ha, ha, ha. See, I even know that. See? 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 But I can't remember de Blasio. To save my life or Cuomo. I said, his brother has a TV show. He says, what's his name? I said, the same name as his. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been bothering me, you know, uh, that I'm, you know, it turns out yeah. my, my numb yeah. feet are nothing to worry about. So I'm, I'm still waiting for the doctor I go to. It tells me, uh, this is going to kill you, <laughs> you know, and, and it's still nothing, you know. Heart's be doing fine. Blood pressure's perfect. Uh, you know, you might have to put up with me for a while. Have you ever read this book called Tune, Tune In? It's about the Beatles. No. It's uh, very good. Very good. Uh, it's about, uh, it, it covers the Beatles, you know, like all biographies where it goes back. Yeah. And uh, it does... 
you know, the grandparents met and then they came and then the parents and he didn't work and then he left and then he was six years old yeah. and then he grew up. Yeah. And it takes him all the way until December 31st, 1960. Oh, yes. I think you maybe told me about this. It, sto yeah. it stops at the time they become a hit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that... Uh, that uh, and you, 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 were, you were friends with John Lennon, right? Yeah, I when knew, he, I knew when John. When he spent time in New York. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I've, you know, friends is a nebulous term. I was an acquaintance of... He was there an acquaintance is. of yeah. mine. Um, so anyway, so I just want, so anyway, when they, you know, I wanted to see the news of the, of the kids being brought out, you know, in Thailand, cause that's a big story, right? And what's Supreme the, fir nominee, what's the first right? one? They do a half hour on the Supreme court nominee. Do I give a fuck? This guy, this guy looks like he's an asshole. He's got bad skin. I don't care about him. <laughs> you know, and I don't, I don't need to have this threat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Brett is not a Supreme Court justice's name. Brett. <laughs> then they'll be Brandon <laughs> and Madison. <laughs> Supreme Court Justice Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, it's named after a city now, Brooklyn and Dallas. And are you getting to the point like I am where you just don't give a shit? I mean, I know it's your job, and it's my job too. But I don't give a shit. Just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to the Bush administration. All my jokes from there, and I'm just recycling them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's unfair to Bush. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> that's unfair that to Bush. To George W. Bush. You know, uh, you, everything has something you compare it to, and, and this is a benchmark, and you go back and you look at Bush and go, well, he wasn't that bad. No. Now, no. you remember when he was president, he was terrible. Well, you also had Cheney. You had the dark dark lord next to him. Yeah, you know? yeah. Have you seen Death of Stalin? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that up until the end. At the end, it suddenly gets deadly serious. It got a little dark. Didn't yeah, it? I mean, yeah. this is a film about the death of Stalin, who basically, uh, what, did he have a heart attack, was it? And they, they just sat around and said, should we get a doctor? Shall we got not get a doctor? Well, <laughs> which doctor should we call? I don't know. What doctor do you think we should call? I don't know, you know. And the, everybody stalled until they held the we mirror. We killed all the good doctors. <laughs> yeah, we killed all the good doctors. It was a, and they, you know, I think they finally hold a mirror up to him. Oh, he's dead. Okay, good. Uh, uh, but it gets very dark at the end, and it's so dark that it negates any comedic value the film has. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was good. Yeah, I think I think it also uh, pretty much realistically demonstrated what happened. Yeah, yeah. Maybe in slapstick terms. But John Hamm as who? B B that was Barry? John Hamm. That was Jason Isaacs. No, who? I made the same mistake. I thought it was John Hamm. It's Jason Isaacs. Oh, really? But is Beria? Yeah. No. No, not Beria. No, uh, Zukov. He was uh, the general. But, oh, okay. But no, I'm thinking, I think John Hamm was in it, wasn't he? No, that was uh, that was the guy who played... Uh, Whoever, Malfoy. Play, whoever in, played in, uh, yeah. In, well, yeah. anyway, let's not argue about a picture. Most of the people out there haven't seen yet, and they should see. By the way, it's available online and so on. You can, you can, yeah, yeah, do, yeah. You, you yeah. can, you can. Yeah, everything is. What else have you seen that's good? What else have I seen that's good? Um, well, I like The Incredibles too. I would see. I think that was the last I, movie we went to. You know. I saw Deadpool 2. Yeah, Deadpool 2. It was fun. It wasn't as good as the first one. But it was no, fun. I didn't think so either, but you didn't, you didn't Here we have... are. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. I'm talking with a political sage, and what are we discussing? What movie did you see lately? Uh, uh, it's It sucks. It's, uh, he's he's just ramrodding shit through. I mean, you know, this, did you this hear? toad gets two Supreme Court, and he might get three because... Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is 85. She says she's not going anywhere. She will stay there till God takes her is how she's yeah, put that's, it. Yeah, I wonder why Kennedy got up. Because he basically is a conservative and he wanted to allow 
trump the ability to put in another justice you know I don't, you know I don't kennedy know. wasn't the we think of him as a great guy because occasionally he would vote on our side but he wasn't i mean he voted uh, he, well, he voted uh, for a lot of things which were terrible you know so i mean he was really a conservative judge and uh, yeah and justice brett <laughs> Yes, right. Brett. <laughs> Brett. That's Supreme Court Justice Brett. Very yeah, good. He's, they're he's, calling him Scalia Light. Scalia Light. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's. But I, I just, you know, I mean, it just, I today he he said something which is amazing. Somebody said, "What do you think about all the children who aren't being reunited with their parents?" He said, "I have an answer to that the problem." He said, "What? Don't try to immigrate." Wow. That, how cruel an answer is that? I mean, do you realize do you realize the the horrible situation he's created for those families and the trauma those kids are going to have to live with for the rest of their lives? Oh, that was Trump who said that, or yes. Kavanaugh? No, it was Trump. Oh, okay. Who who said? Yeah, they said, "What's your solu- What's your solution to getting these kids reunited with their parents?" And he said, "Don't immigrate illegally." That's what happens yeah, to you. Yeah, he's, he's showing them what could happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks yeah. for being. That'll show them. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll kill their kids. That'll yeah. show them. Yeah. yeah. Then they won't try. Well, to what do you think? Them. What do you think of those kids in Thailand? Well, that's what you get for going into a cave. <laughs> you know, <I> mean, <laughs> they deserved it. You know, uh, 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 yeah. Would you help coal miners that way? I guess you would. Uh, anyway, so I, I, you know, it's just. The world is just, it's just not nice anymore. There's, you know. The world was never nice. You, you don't think so? You don't think when you and I were growing up, and you're about 10 years younger than I am, okay, a little, maybe more so, uh, that the, life was better? That, that the world was just a little kinder? I mean, we had, a, we had the McCarthy era. We had all that shit. But basically, we were kinder. No, we were more ignorant. Ignorant, maybe, but kinder. Maybe ignorance is. Better. No, we grew up. We grew up in family situations. We grew up in communities, and we knew everybody. Yeah. And, and because that was your entertainment was right. knowing everybody. Right. No, no, and there was, there were child molestations. There was, uh, there was uh, sexual harassment. There was uh, discrimination. There was uh, drunkenness. There was families who. Then how who, come it feels so miserable to me today? No, it's just we know more. You know, everybody everybody does this. The time you grew up, you didn't know nothing. You were learning about everything. Yeah. People were, oh, look at you. You've grown so much. I knew you. Were. And they were open. And and you remember, oh, for Christ's sake, you know. And then there was the discovery period, and then, and now it's. It's just different. It's not better or worse. It's just different. Just different. Well, I don't know. With Trump in office, it it seems like we are not the country I signed up for. You know. No, no. Right now, it's it's the revenge of the greedy, mean, and stupid. You know. <laughs> but the pendulum swings both yeah. ways. So, so you know, hopefully, we can hang on to that 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 thing that Martin Luther King says about uh, the arc of justice being very long, but it bends towards the good. So remind me of my youth by taking your camera and just pointing it out your window. Uh, there's, There's your town. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, see, I'm on the East Coast, and he's on... He's on the West Coast, the and, Pacific Ocean, and and I was I, I was amazed when I was a child by the fact that we could even do that, and it was blurry, it was blurry, <laughs> it was real and black and white and blurry, as it often is, as my vision is now from these allergies. Anyway, <laughs> especially with your bags. Thank you so much to the lovely and attractive. Are you playing anywhere anybody would know about? No, I'm coming to New York with my little one man show the second or second week of November. Okay, so. well I'm gonna be in the front row. All right. Because I gotta see you. Thank you, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Will Durst. Thanks, Will. Take it easy, Alex Bennett. 
Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Ah, there we go. Turn on the microphone. I forget how these things work if I don't do them for a couple of days. Hi, how are you? Ah, oh, boy. Every, everything was going wrong tonight. Uh, it just I, You come in here after... A couple of days of not doing a show, and everything is wrong. Like, for instance, see the sign up there? It's usually always up in the corner, right? So I come in here, and it's not in the corner anymore, and I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, here's what happens. Uh, let, me, let me turn on my Skype just so people, if they want to call, can call. Okay, all right. I did a, uh, a, a thing where I... Uh, um, I come in this morning, and uh, I come up to the sign-on screen for my Windows. And you know what that means? That while I wasn't looking, Windows decided to upgrade automatically. Now, what that does is it changes all the um, settings in my video program. And so I have to reset the, the, the focus, and I have to reset this and that, and the audio had to be reset and so on. All because they they upgrade and they don't tell you. Uh, I just have to know because it's there. And so then I go and I I open up the show and I look and I go, well, that sign's usually always up in the corner the way I've got it framed. And somehow fucking Microsoft changed the way my 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 whole setup is here. So that's you know. I had to deal with that. And then I had another thing here, which I can't even really explain. Have, have you ever had this? You open up a window. This is in the Mac. You open up a window that you normally use, and it's at the top, and you can't bring it down, and you can't move it down. Yeah. Well, I, was, I had to deal with that, so I had to completely reinstall a program. And, uh, you know, whatever. Hey, first caller out of the, uh, out of, out of the barn. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Boddicker, who, you know, calls us on a semi-frequent basis, so when he's here, we feel it's a deep pleasure to have him here. <laughs> well, I've been out of town, so. Where you been? Uh, we went to uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And was there some reason to go to Charleston, South Carolina? Yes, there was. And what was that reason? Uh, my oldest daughter got married. Really? Yeah. Doesn't that make you feel old? Well, I am old. Yeah, but I mean, doesn't that really make yeah. you feel it? But it's your oldest daughter, so it's a, is it the first daughter to get married? Yes, yes. Oh, yes, boy, yes. that must have been traumatic. It, 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 traumatic. Yeah. Was it? I mean, how would you feel about that? Uh, she married a really nice guy, and it's a, they've been dating for nine years or whatever, so it, it was about time, but, yeah, it was still, it was still traumatic and emotional. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, are they going on a honeymoon? Uh, no, he just recently started a new job, like last summer. So all of his vacation went to the wedding. You know what it is? When, you, when, you, when you've been going that long and then you get married, somehow things like honeymoons, things like that, yeah, we'll take a nicer vacation next year, you know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so they, well, need to, they need to rest. Well, long. congratulations. Well, thank you. Are you thank a you. grandfather yet at all? But that was my oldest daughter and the first one to get married. So yeah, in, well, in a Catholic family, that would be oh, verboten. Oh, I oh okay. Well, I mean, the reason I'm asking is she she could have had a baby and she could have had a baby. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. she could have had a baby. Yeah. Well, congrats. No, I'm not yet. So well, we're looking forward to that. Well, congratulations to you and your family, and uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I'm so happy for you. Well, I'm 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 glad you're happy. Uh, we were very happy, and the the trip and everything, and it just went perfect. No no real hiccups. You know, you get all that kind of family together for that long. Did you drive down there, or did you uh, take a plane? Excuse me, what's the question? Did you did you drive a car down there, or did you? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We drove from uh, uh, Plano to. Well, it's actually the Isle of Palms, which is one of the islands north of Charleston. But yeah, it was a. Uh, Took us 20 hours to get there, mm -hmm. driving, and well, all, all the time combined, and about 18 and a half coming back. We yeah. figured out how to do it better. Yeah, but you can you can do a nice little trip along the way. 
you know yeah. something I I discovered the other day. I'm I'm looking at, at my bottle of Snapple. Okay, and I, I want to you know I I hadn't looked at it in a while because uh, I see it become sometimes you'll look at the back of these bottles and it goes Snapple a Pepsi company or something like that. Sure. Yeah. And I uh, I I had a certain familiarity with uh, Snapple. Uh, with with Snapple because remember that woman that used to do the the Snapple ads. Remember she she was like the receptionist, and they hired her to do the ads for Snapple. I don't remember w- Wendy no. Wendy from Snapple I think was her name. Wow! And I got okay. I got to know her because she came on my show and stuff, and so I got to really know a lot about Snapple. Like I learned one thing about Snapple: if, if when you first get it, don't shake it. You just go and on the okay. bottom to get rid of the uh, the residue. S- this residue that, f- that floats on the bottom. But I'm looking at the at the at the uh, bottle here. I'm sure you know this, but it says produced under the authority of Snapple Beverage Corporation, Plano, Texas, five fifty three zero one Legacy Drive, Plano, yep. Texas. Yep. Do they make it there, or is that just the home office? I think that's just the headquarters. I think it's part of... I don't know if Snapple is part of the uh, uh, Canada Dry, and there's well, a... Well, that's what I... See. Well, that's probably, what, Rob's probably been by it. Well, that that's why I looked at the bottle. I wanted to see if they had changed companies, and they are still the Snapple Beverage Company. They are, they, uh, they they apparently are not owned by like Pepsi Cola or, you know, any other residue. I thought uh, they merged with somebody, but I'll, I'll have to check that out. I I thought that they did too, but yeah. you know who knows. So I I'll try by the building you, tomorrow. I'll look. Damn it! You know something? He, again, this whole thing has like, oh God bless it. You know I hate I hate Windows. I just hate Microsoft, and I hate what they do, uh, because what they do is they. There we go. Now I I had to reset this oh, the the picture up, so that it was. Oh boy, it just on, it, on the on the feet. Yeah, the, it reset itself. I had to reset the screen here, you know, because Microsoft decides they want to change something, and they don't want to ask you first if you'd like it changed. You know, and it's ridiculous. So, eh, fuck Microsoft, fuck them all, <laughs> fuck them all, fuck them all. Uh, what? What? Uh, uh, who did I have uh, some 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 technical problem with somebody the other day? But I mean, the thing with with this is they go, you come in and you suddenly realize that your machine has rebooted itself, so you know that they installed new stuff, even though you tell them not to do it. And now it's like they don't ask you if you want them to do it or not. They just say, what time of night would be good for you? And then I come in, and there's no nothing that says, we just rebooted your machine. I, You know, it could have been the machine went out and rebooted itself up. I, didn't, I don't know that. And everything, all my settings change because Microsoft decides they have to upgrade. You have a particularly good-looking picture tonight, Phil. Yeah, no, I was going to say the same thing. He's like clear and he's what? like. Have you, done, have you changed anything? Yeah. Uh, a couple things. But first rule of business is Scott, congratulations and years of health and happiness for your daughter and her fam- and your family. Well, thank you, Phil. Uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, didn't Wendy from Snapple say made from the best stuff on earth? Yes. Yes. That, and I think uh, they, that, I think they I, still have that on here somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, I added some lights. Uh, you know, I I, it ne- I needed more light, uh, so I stuck a few more out there. But you still don't have a Brio camera like I do. Brio? Yeah, uh, well, it's 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 made by Logitech, but it's called the Brio. It's a two hundred. Uh, it's a two hundred dollar camera. It's four K. Uh, well, I have a. I don't. You know, I got that. Uh, one that you used to have, the Logitech 9-something, 920. 930. 930, yeah. 930E. Yeah, I can't I can't yeah. read it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's too small. So, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, well, I'll ask you later. 
but um, it's been uh, been quite a quite a day yesterday. Uh, yeah. you know news. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. You know why bore everybody with the same old, same old. Um, yeah. I, I went to the uh, the uh, neurologist yesterday. Oh, good. I wanted to hear about uh, how that went. Y yeah. Uh, Tell you to go to a chiropractor? Uh, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, he told me to go to a physical therapist. And I said, well, my wife has a chiropractor. And she keeps saying, go to the chiropractor, go to the chiropractor. And he said, well, you could. He said, but with this sort of thing, I really would like you to see a physical therapist who has that kind of training because a, 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 a what do you call it, a chiropractor could damage it. Well, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, Unless he gets x-rays first. Well, I just, I had some x-rays taken. Uh, and uh, I mean, he said you can go to the chiropractor, he said, but I would prefer that you see a physical therapist. Um, mm -hmm. And what it is, is it's not neur neuropathy at all. So, oh. yeah. So if you leave it alone, it'll fall off. No, uh, what it is probably is uh, it's a, it's a nerve, compressed nerve, or something like that. Or uh, he said something about um, uh, um, uh, spinal stenosis, but I don't have spinal stenosis because that's when it's really narrows, yeah. narrows and stuff like that. But he said uh, what you've got, he said, is not uh, is is not. Um, um, what do you call it? Neurological, he said. Yeah. It, I mean, it's not. It's not. Excuse me. What was the term I used? Psych uh, psychosomatic. No, no. He, no what, did, what did I say a few moments ago? Uh, 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 neuropathy. Yes. Neuropathy. He yep. says not neuropathy. He said you do not have that. Yep. Uh, and he said, uh, you know. And uh, I said, any drugs you can give me that would help? Uh, you know, ease the pain or ease the symptoms? He said, no. Yeah. But, you know, we're just got to get you some physical therapy. He says, if that doesn't work, we go to plan B. And I said, what's plan B? He says, well, we're not there yet. You know, yeah. uh, that's the chiropractor. No, no. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't know that this doctor wouldn't have said, sure, give the chiropractor a try if you feel he might work. But yeah, but he felt safer suggesting a you know, a physical Enough therapist. Course therapy. Now I have an old, I have a physical therapist that did my knee and I could go back to him, but he's all the way downtown. So I don't know, you know, but you know, I'll, I'll, my feet are still numb and, uh, but they don't, they, I, they don't bother me as much cause I'm not worrying about them as much. I just take them as a fact of life now. You ever go to one of those, uh, uh oriental places that does the reflexology for 20 bucks for an hour and a half to your feet? No, uh, they they rub your feet for like twenty dollars. Uh, they uh, you know they just they just work on your feet and your legs, and uh, huh? No happy ending. No happy ending. No happy least, ending. Then, then fuck it. No fuck it. Ending. If they if they give me a happy ending and they take health insurance, I'm 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 theirs. I'm right there. Now the twenty dollar place I don't think is the health insurance type. Really. Yeah, it's just uh, some illegal alien that came across the border, yeah. uh, smuggled in, and uh, then they rub your feet. Well, here, here's something. Have to here's take so, their kids. Here's something that happened the other yesterday to me. So he's he's trying to decide, you know, do I have any neurological problems, you know? Mm -hmm. And he starts asking me questions. Like I'm going to ask you some questions, like, you know, what's your address? Um, uh, you know, how old, how old are you? Uh, yeah. And a couple other questions like that. And then out of clear blue sky, he says, who's the governor of New York? Yeah. And I blank out completely. That happens. You know, and uh, and then then he said to me, OK, well, who's the mayor of New York? And I blanked out completely. I just yeah. I, and I felt like I was somebody with like uh, Alzheimer's who was suddenly trying to. Oh, uh, well, I who who is? And I said, I said, the, the, whoever the governor is, his brother's on television, right? You know, and his yeah. father was the governor. You know, I knew that right. much. Uh, and <laughs> I suddenly tried, I really felt bad about it afterwards. I really felt like I had my major senior moment at a time when I didn't want to have it because I was being <laughs> diagnosed, okay? Let's have those. And, at, and then I started we... to think about why I didn't know these two things right off the top of my head. 
And the answer was, very simply, we don't talk about local stuff on this show. I don't pay, uh, and I don't watch the local news. So, you know, I'm not that aware of everything de Blasio does or that Cuomo does. I am aware of everything Trump does or, or uh, even the senator from, from our state does. But I'm not... Uh, I'm, uh, I, 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 do you know who the governor is, uh, Scott? Of uh, where? Of New York. Uh, uh, Cuomo. See, he knows. What? I don't. I don't know his first name. His da his dad was like Mario uh, Cuomo. What? Mario Cuomo. Mario, and and this is, it's not Perry Cuomo. I know that. The Cuomo. <laughs> Cuomo. <laughs> It's Nelson Rockefeller was the last one I remember. Nelson Rockefeller was the last one you remember. <laughs> um, uh, I, um, but I, it, that really, that really bothered me when that happened. I'm going, God, you know, I feel like such an idiot. I told him I was a talk show host. We, you know, yeah. talk politics, you know. And then all of a sudden he says, "Who's the governor of?" And I went, "Well, hey, uh, hey, humma, humma, humma. You know. Hey, hey, who's buried in Grant's tomb? Well, it wasn't. It isn't Grant. <laughs> Grant's not buried there anymore. His remains no. were moved years ago. So the answer is not. <laughs> not Grant. Not Grant. Right. And uh, that's in New York, you know. Yeah. But I, uh, um, uh, it, it, that kind of got to me. That really got to me. Uh, and well, uh, He just wanted to make sure that uh, you would lose your mind before the neuropathy. You, you, uh, you, you, you know, I think I was having what I would call doctor's visit syndrome okay like people sometimes their blood pressure will go up when they take their blood pressure because it's they're in the doctor's office and first thing when i went there i took out all my uh, all my insurance cards and then i left them on the desk you know all these and then one of them fell down and somebody said hey you dropped one you know and i just i couldn't get it together and i don't know i think it was doctor visit yeah, you could have been syndrome. nervous I wasn't nervous particularly about this. I, I, I figured he'd either say, "Hey, you know, you've got something we really got to work on here," or you know, what he said basically was, "Now nah, let me get an X-ray on it." In fact, he said to me, "I'd like to give you another test where they where they zap you with electricity, and it's not pleasant, but it can Is give me an that I the, they connect no, no, that, that no, that's not it, not it." And I said, does it hurt? And he says, yeah, a little. I said, do I have to have it? He says, not really. I said, then let's just go for the x-ray. I'd rather be bombarded by x-rays, you know. Uh, I'm going for a CT scan at a 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, really? They're, yeah. Yeah, it's simple. You've had them before, haven't you? Yeah. 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 I, don't mind, uh, I don't mind CT scans because I don't feel the claustrophobia with it because I can see the other end and, you know. Absolutely, yeah. You know, uh, and... Uh, uh, they, they had me in. A, they did CTs on me when I when I had my uh, my what do you call it? Uh, my, kidney thing. My kidney stone. Yeah. Um, you know that was 2015. I was just looking. I, they have a thing called my chart at uh, at uh, 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 Mount Drawn. Sinai, and I um, I uh, uh, yeah. So, you know what I, I know what I got to do. This camera got moved. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, because well, on the Skype camera, uh, it's a little different. Looks like you're um, uh, in. You're in a lot closer than normal. Oh, really? Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me do that. There, well, that, that I'll I'll do it after the show. Uh, wait a minute. The Skype camera. Let me see here. Then what moved? What the hell moved? That's strange. Tools. Uh, Microsoft options. moved your camera. Uh, they it could it, no I don't think so I, that uh, that I don't think happened no Mike oh this camera you want you want, want me more like this no uh, it's it's tighter than it normally is oh really it's fine I mean it's oh, just more you're oh, in a in a portrait a, uh, thing rather than a wide angle well hold on a second wait a minute. Uh, let me see here advanced settings exposure right light ha uh, 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 uh. What kind of anti flicker? No gain. No bright. No, it would be the crop. Balance. Huh? You're cropped. You're in cropped you, in you, instead you, of oh, out. I, I I see. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I think I know what I can do to change that. This this by the way, folks, is not the normal uh, thing here. Hold yes, on. it is. 
Hey, uh, do you? Uh, my new uh, board's coming next week. Do you want the uh, old one for uh, for the Meyer Studio? Uh, sure. Why don't you Why don't you send it across if you want me okay. to? Have it. I'll okay, I'll send it across and I'll label uh, the things for the uh, pl uh, minus pl plus minus thing. Is this okay? This picture's okay, right? Yeah, it's fine. It's good enough. I mean, you know, we see you. Sorry, and folks, if you just tuned in, but you see, we have to readjust everything when uh, uh, when uh, those assholes at Microsoft decide to change everything. So, and and I got to change this camera later because you can see I'm wearing shorts tonight. No. So if I do this, you see oh, that we can see. You can see the legs. Anyway, uh, so anyway, you know, I I got to tell you, uh, I tuned on the news. Uh, yesterday morning uh, and the story I wanted to hear was um, uh, well actually no uh, this morning I turned it on the story I wanted to hear was what was happening with the kids in Thailand and the yeah. first story they had on was f the fucking Supreme Court nominee you know and I that kind of pissed me off because I the one great thing about the Thailand story is that it was a story that didn't didn't have politics yeah. associated with it. It and and you had a rooting interest. Everybody in the world had a rooting interest uh, for these kids, and uh, it was such a pos in many ways a positive story. And you wanted to know how it had turned out because you know nothing had been reported and. You know, all these news outfits were going with the nominee. You know, this guy with the bad, bad skin. Uh, and 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 I just went, fuck you. You know, I mean, he, the real story is that that's a real story. Yeah. The thing about the Supreme Court nominee, and knew he was gonna he was gonna offer up a douchebag. Uh, you uh, know. Yeah, one of the four was gonna get picked. Well, yeah, well, it wasn't gonna be the woman. Because she, no. she had too many stretch marks. Uh, she she had, had eight months as a judge. And seven kids. Yeah. Seven, seven kids? Yes. Not bad looking, though. No more kegels left in that woman, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. You know. I, I know what you got to do to get them back. <laughs> and by the way, and she's a staunch, she's a staunch Catholic, and they wondered, I wonder how she'll vote on Roe versus, versus Wade. <laughs> Yeah, the guy like, he chose was a Catholic, also. I guess uh, you know. Yeah, what, what's his name? Uh, starts with an H. Uh, uh, Brett. Um, Listen, I don't know the governor of California. You're asking me. Kavanaugh. <laughs> Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh. That's it. Well, Kavanaugh. that's yes, and there's an H towards the end of his name. Yeah. Uh, there's an H in there somewhere. Brett yeah. Kavanaugh. So we have yeah. a Supreme Court justice named Brett now, which, or Will. Um, uh, uh, I, I think. I that, hmm? What? I didn't know that judges that weren't Jewish. You know, I thought that was a prerequisite to be a judge or an attorney. You had to be Jewish. No, you, no, no. They're not Jewish necessarily. But hello, oh. Patrick. See. Hi. Uh, did you find that story about the uh, Thailand kids fascinating? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Did, did you realize that Elon Musk and I were on the same page? You remember on the show the yeah, other yeah, night? Yeah, 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 no, that was Elon Musk's plan. Pod, yeah. And then Elon Musk said, hey, I, you know, I could come up with a, like a submarine kind of thing. Yeah, the, uh, only problem, the only problem with what Elon Musk wanted to do was how long would it take to get to them, you know? Yeah. How long would it take to set it up, test it out, see if it works, you know? Uh, this way worked just fine, you know? Plus, a 15-inch squeeze point that uh, uh, would have been tough to get some sort of me mechanism through there. Yeah. Uh, but they used the full face mask like I was talking about. Yeah. And uh, the, then the rescue diver carried the, 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 uh, the uh, tank for the people that they were rescuing. And yeah. uh, it was uh, uh, very good and it turned out great. Yeah, it turned out great. And uh, all the kids are alive and... Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, and, and it was, it was wonderful that the whole world came together in paying attention to this and wanting to do something about it and seeing if they could help in some way. 
Except us, we didn't do much of anything. But you know, I wonder how the uh, Thai diver uh, lost his life. They so he ran out of air, but he was returning. Uh, yeah, from but Tony. he was he was he was actually placing air bottles along the route uh, as safety for everybody, and somehow I don't know he he lost his air and. You would think, since he was in charge of all these bottles, he could have laid his hands on them. No, what had happened was he had gone uh, out to, uh, he had seen the children mm -hmm. and was on his way back, uh, I believe, after placing the bottles. And that's when he lost his air. But I, it just, uh, you know, maybe he was in between tanks. You're welcome. Yeah, oh, uh, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, no, but I mean, it's it, it's still the story itself is now. Have you heard what they're going to do with the caves? No, well, no. that's the kids who had to buy. Right? Man, I'm in. What? You ready? You ready for this? I heard this tonight on the news. It's it, 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 it's golden. They're going to suck out all the water, okay, and then they're going to reopen it as a tourist attraction. Oh, yes. No, they, those things fill with water too easily. It's no, they're gonna percent. they're gonna do whatever it takes to keep water from filling up in there, and they're gonna t then take tours down there for you to see where the kids were. Even yeah, they almost drowned. <laughs> you, you know, this is kind of like this is kind of like saying, "Knock knock this chip off my shoulder," yeah. <laughs> you know. You know, or, or, or the better one was in New York. Let's build buildings tall enough that somebody will want to hit them with an airplane, you know. But who would want to take a tour down there? I, I you know, know I mean, there. well, it's a, it. I bet you they would do a lot of business. Yeah. Well, right. You know, most you have to go in the water to get there. Though? Most caves have stalactites and stalagmites from the pictures that I was seeing. do a scuba dive down there. <laughs> we go. It, it didn't look like the normal, like a limestone cave. It, it looked like a fissure or a crack in, 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 in the hillside because it was just like a pathway. There were some, I saw some stalactites. You, you did? Yeah. All right. Well, it was limited on what you saw in the news. But uh, stalactites go from the ceiling down, right? And stalagmites come from the ground up. Yeah. Did they ever ask you know, the guy why he took the kids down in the cave? I and mean, what the hell was he doing? What was he thinking? <laughs> Scott he, had it. <laughs> he wanted he wanted to be alone with them. I don't know. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> I think Couldn't they got kind of much studying to be a priest of the time. A, a monk. A monk. A monk. A monk. A monk? My mother would never let me do that. Well, be a monk, you mean? She probably won't want me to come back. Maybe she won't come back. <laughs> Can you imagine Tony as a monk? My mother would love to get rid of me for a month. Yeah. yeah. She wouldn't miss me. How's honestly. your mother doing, by the way? She's, I, you know, I don't want to sound sarcastic. She's doing better. <laughs> my Aunt Barbara called, so they're talking now for an hour, ripping my uncle apart. You know what my Aunt Barbara said, Alex? What? She's, she, they hate, she hates it because my uncle, my uncle Vinny passed away. And but she hates him? She hates all of it. Because you know why? She goes, he is so fucking well, wait. He, cheap. But you say he's... Alex, getting, he is cheap. Well, oh, which, which, wait a minute. Which guy is this? The guy I work for. She oh, says, he can't put air conditions on in this place. She hates... There's always a yeah. simpler line. He, you, like are working, it, you are working in the last uh, sweat... What, sweat? Yeah, I'm in a sweat. Oh. It was 100 degrees. I swear to God. I, I could take the heat, so I'm in pretty good shape. But I was like, I, what am I oh, doing? All, here? all you need, like, all you need, is, all you, all you need is a major fire in there, and then you'll be just oh, like no, the triangle so shape, shirt no, waist really, factor. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> so fast out that door, collected unemployment. Yeah. <laughs> I will check you. I'm gonna fall down the stairs. The perfect way. To, if I fall, if I get hurt in the job box, can I go out on disability? Thing? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. Well, you can probably pay the doctor. Listen, I've I mean, listened to you on this program. I th I can't figure out why you aren't on disability already. Yeah, that is true. My name is. Oh my god. So you know what's funny? Now she's all joking about she's doing. Thanks for asking. She's doing better. Yeah. So I just put the air conditioner on sixty degrees when I close the door. Oh, that's nice. I wish your <laughs> boss would do the same thing at his place. It was it was hot. I said, "Mom, just leave it alone." Do you have fans or anything in there? What's that? You have fans in there? 
Yeah. Well, not in her bedroom. I just keep. No, I'm talking place. about you, where you were. I don't care about your mother. Oh, where you mother, work? Oh, work? No. Oh, yeah. We got exhaust fans, but you don't even feel. All it does is push the hot air out. It's Can't like you? Formatting. Isn't there somebody he can be reported to? You know what? I'm telling you, I have charges probably if I really wasn't such a nice guy. He came in today because he said, "I mean, I don't hate the guy. He's we get along, but you got to understand the family, my aunt." I hope, yeah, I hope he. I hope he. I hope he doesn't have the internet or. Uh, no, he doesn't. Okay. Know okay. Yeah. And they're not the brightest either. I was telling Shaq, he doesn't. I have to visit him because I have a lot of gossip with him. This family, you're right. When you said like, remember that time you said the funeral, when you made me cry. Yeah. When you, right. You know what happened? <laughs> you would have left. It was his, it was his aunt who died, and I said, "Well, I never liked her anyway." And <laughs> and he broke down and started crying. I I was and slave, rule slave. number yeah. one in broadcasting gone. is, yes, you can make a joke about, at anybody's expense, but don't make them cry because then you <laughs> lose the audience. I then they hate you. But listen to this, Alex. When I went to the funeral at that, that time, I'll never forget it. There was like some of my cousins who I haven't seen for a while for whatever reason. And they came over to me, hey, how you doing, stuff like that. And I asked how his mother was, Lewis's. It was like married to my cousin. She's just, my mother died two years ago. <laughs> so I give my best. My brother's like, are you stupid? Didn't you know? I said, no, how would I know? He said, because you don't listen to what I talk to you. Don't say anything. He said, and I was making a joke. I could make a joke at this. I thought of you when I said that, Alex. <laughs> so my mom died two years ago. <laughs> so, this is a dysfunctional okay. family, and it's not even Jewish. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, you're right. Have you become well, the elephant not, man, no Phil? Cousins, what were you doing? I was starting to turn into dribble. Really? Why? Phil, you're looking pretty good. Look at it. It looks like you lost weight. Uh, you know, uh, that's what a lot of people have said. Maybe it's that I'm getting more blood to my heart since I had the one you know, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm not meeting it in a uh, You do look healthier. You do look I mean, healthier. You're really better. Yeah. Maybe like, it is. Maybe it is. No, like, maybe. Like wait, okay, colors. shut up. Is, Tony, like, shut up. Uh, oh, sorry, okay. Let me let me talk to <laughs> Phil. No, you know what it is? It isn't that you have a better camera. You have color in your face. Yeah. yeah. Blood to his head. Yeah. Well, uh, and, you know, that was just one stint that was. Stint. Uh, stint. Stint. A stint. A stint would be something you would do in the army. A stint is something they put in your heart. <laughs> it felt like a stint. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, that that one that artery was only seventy percent blocked. The one I'm going oh, for in a week or two is a hundred percent blocked. Oh, really? Have a heart attack at any moment? Yeah, that's the one they call the widowmaker. Oh well, good. Why couldn't they get to the widowmaker like yesterday? Uh, they didn't know if there was a blockage behind the blockage. Oh, so they're sending me to a different hospital that has a machine that rotor rooters the blockage, puts a stent oh. in, and then they can put in multiple stents. Uh, it's called um, uh, Stent City. Stent. They go, they yes. go, down, to, they go City. down to, they send somebody down to Staples. Oh, yeah. yeah no. that, uh, well, they, they just get a bunch of. Uh, straws over at McDonald's and cut them into pieces. Well, they got to get them soon because they're going to only be paper uh, at, in a little yeah. while. You know... Hey, were you a smoker? No. Wasn't a smoker. Uh, I mean, I smoked for a couple of years. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, why don't you ask him what his diet is, okay? I know he has a love affair with steak. No, like, forget or, that. Forget that. He likes to open up a... Uh, you remember that... that, that, uh, that uh, uh, Fat they used to have called Spry. Do you remember that? It came in a can. Oh, Spam! Yeah, he liked to just eat he that eat from that. the can. No, oh, I, my I, God, that's so salty. Not sugar. Spam. Stick it to the wall. Spry. Spry. I'm talking about Spry. spry. Yeah. Somebody once sent you a big metal canister of David's cookies. Yeah. And you said, you want a cookie? And I said, well, all right. And I, I left you one cookie. Uh, I ate the whole. Thing. Uh, I, I like went it. out to the pool, and uh, yeah. and I ate all the cookies. I must have smoked some pot. This was David. <laughs> Co was well, David. In 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 San Francisco, this was a real treat because David cookies were from New York, right? You know, and they were so, delicious cookies. I think yeah. I don't remember because yeah. you ate them all, you motherfucker. Right. I, he was in your apartment a lot, Alex, and you were right there. What? When you come home and see the guy eating all your food and shit, it's like what goes here? <laughs> 
<laughs> he was outside at yeah. the pool. But uh, uh, yeah, so um, uh, so you guys, you're gonna have uh, yeah. So when oh, when did, when are they doing the uh, unblocking? Uh, in another week or two. I, I just needed a break, you know. Uh, and uh, so I'll probably do it towards the end of the month. Yeah, but you do look, you do. It, am I right, good. Scott? He looks healthier, doesn't he? And yeah, Patrick, you're, you're, right. you're right. He's got color. Yeah. Yeah. There's an, something else happened. I thought I had, uh, I was getting arthritis throughout my entire body because every one of my joints ached. Well, the stent, since it was put, stent, since it was put in, I don't have that pain anymore. Maybe you won't get blood circulation. Yeah. Uh, I think I think you're uh, you know I think uh, uh, you better be glad you found out about this now. Yeah. And I, and by the way, uh, don't do anything between now and two weeks that would hurt you. Boo! Uh, okay. no. uh, yeah, you should stay home from work. Take it, take it. Yes, uh, Patrick. Question for Mr. Phil: How's your uh, healing of the other end doing? Oh, the uh, well, I had a little bit of you know this is the waiting room again but i had a little bit of blood in my urine so oh, I'm good having to see. nothing like blood in the urine yes <laughs> you, you know something you know something i yeah. i uh, uh a lot of people find stool in their blood they found yeah. blood in my stool i mean it's that's <laughs> not the joke but stool, you know how huh? people have uh uh, uh, blood in their stool. Blood in the stool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they found stool, stool in my blood. blood. That's a, that's that. a joke. Okay. That's because he was full of shit. <laughs> yeah, I oh, can't shit. even do the jokes <laughs> right anymore. Maybe something you ate. What about? Uh, so, have you finished your Kegel exercises? Uh, I don't, uh, I'm not having as uh, much of a problem. Uh, I've graduated from diapers to pads. Excellent. And uh, one pad I can wear all day and all night, and then I just change it the next morning. Well, good. Then uh, you're you're you know you're proving you're drying up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <God. laughs> Shit. What? Before long, you're gonna be. No, well, both ways. It depends too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it. Uh, you know, in the beginning, it was it was hard. You know, you get a little dribble on your leg. It's it's just, uh, and you know. You get pissed at yourself <laughs> when you. But you probably can't control it. That's why, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, but, but will that get better, Phil, or no? What? Like your yeah, urine, like your pee pee, like you know, like, uh, like, like, uh, you hold well, it. I'm more aware of uh, all the things. Boy, you're breaking up a little. You bit know, there. Uh, you're breaking up a little. Yeah, bit. I, me. Yeah, and and uh, you guys are freezing on me. Let me uh, let me reboot this thing. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, he'll be right back. We can hear more about Phil's adventures in wetting himself and uh, uh, the blood in the stool good, yeah. and uh, the stool in his blood. And the, when uh, we return, time out now. Hey, Alex, can he still do scuba diving or no? Probably not. I don't know. Ask him. He's gone right um, now. What are you asking me oh, for? He's rebooting. he's rebooting. But what are you oh. asking the question when he's oh, not yeah, here? Yeah. Okay. God damn it. You are <laughs> so annoying. You know, anyway, where was I? Hey, Alex, just to follow up. Yes. Uh, Snapple is part of the Dr. Pepper Snapple group. Oh, really? So they, oh, okay. They did merge with they somebody. They did merge did, with somebody. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're correct. Yeah, but you're in, the main offices are in Plano, Texas. Yes. 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 Wow. Because when I saw that, I went, there's only one Plano I know of in Texas, so it's got to be the yep. one near Scott, you know. Have there's you, a lot of there's a lot of corporate headquarters out on that Legacy Drive. That's where Rob's company is, HP and and uh, Pepsi Cola and J.C. Penney. You know, I go you go up to uh, we go up to Vermont every year to Burlington up near Burlington, and uh, up there are some of the companies you hear about. Vermont Teddy Bears are mm. in in Burlington, Vermont, as well as Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's, which isn't owned by Ben and Jerry anymore, but they they kept it up there. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so we'll we'll wait for Phil to get back before I bring up anything political. Ah. But I I was really ha the Thailand story. I mean, yeah. You know what? You know what's funny? I was mentioning I couldn't remember Mario Cuomo. And I couldn't remember Bill de Blasio, but today I'm talking with uh, Durst, if you heard the interview, and we were talking about when I was a kid and he was a kid, 
there was a little girl who got stuck in a well. And this became a sensational story throughout the entire country because everybody was waiting to see what would happen with this kid who had fallen in the well. And they were sending down diggers to go down and get her out of this pipe or whatever. And eventually at the end, and they kind of dramatized this in radio days, Woody Allen's radio days, uh, she, they brought her up and she was dead. And I said to him, I remember the name of the girl. It was Kathy Fiscus. And I looked that name up, and sure enough, I was right. Now, how is it that I can't remember Mario Cuomo, <laughs> but I can remember Kathy Fiscus? Right. I'm, go I'm going, guys. I'm going. I'll tell you. Saturday, we went to uh, Jack Garfine had his 88th birthday. I put up the video. Did any of you see the video? I think you did. A really nice speech he gave there. And do, you, and do you know the guy who was standing to the side of him, who is in incredible shape, is near his age, uh, and was in the camps as well. Uh, but they didn't know each other at that point. But anyway, uh, he was a, it became 88, and uh, so we, they had a small little party in his apartment. And we said, next year, or at least maybe when he gets to be 90, let's hold it at our place, because then you can invite tons of people, you know. Let's see here. Here comes Phil. There we go. Uh, okay. Did you rebooted, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. And, and Tony had a question, but now Tony's gone. There's just oh. an empty chair where Tony once sat. Perhaps That's he's had a heart attack and we'll never oh, see him again. Oh, there he is, damn it. He's gone just in time for Phil to be back. Yeah. Uh, so I ask you a question, Tony. What's that? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to get my diet soda. Phil, can you still scuba dive? Uh, yeah, eventually. Oh, I uh, should yeah, I should, I should be able to. Well, yeah, it's exercise, you know. Well, uh... You know, I'm 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 lucky that I didn't have a heart attack scuba diving before. All that pressure of the water, no? No, this, the pressure's not an issue. It's the exertion. So, what? Oh. Uh, do they have any idea what caused it? Probably your diet, right? Uh, well, it could be hereditary as well. You know, I've always had high cholesterol. Yeah. My father had high cholesterol. But don't don't, don't do you and take do you take statins for that? I do now, but uh, oh, I didn't start taking them until about four or five years ago. Oh, boy. No, statins are... So, uh, I had a doctor say to me uh, that if he, if he had a kid today, uh, he yeah. would start them on statins in their teens. He said oh, they're yeah. that good and that important to your health. Uh, they, they, they consider statins a wonder drug. Right. You agree yeah. with that assessment, Scott? Oh, yeah. yeah my, uh, they, they even think that it can... Uh, um, affect uh, Alzheimer's. Really? really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the fact that, that you won't get it because you got better blood flow t in your brain and whatnot. Yeah. Well, well, at least that's what my doctor told me. He said he takes them and he didn't have high cholesterol. Yeah. Well, I, my cholesterol, my, my numbers this year were perfect. They were low and everything. Y yesterday I went in, they did my vitals, you know, and I had, like, my blood pressure was... Uh, what what one one twenty nine over seventy eight or something like that? I don't know, but it was. I she said it said is that good? She said perfect, just perfect. You know. Yeah, my blood pressure was good today too. I must not have gotten upset at anybody. Yeah, I think it, from here on in on this program, since it has become Alex's waiting room, or we could call it God's waiting room. Uh, uh everybody should ta give give their blood pressure count for the day. And, uh, you know, tell hey. us how much blood was in your stool today. And well, to get on the panel, you're... you should have a, uh, a blood pressure cuff uh, attached to your computer screen so you could just put your arm in it. And uh, if your blood pressure is good enough, then you can get on. I wonder why, <laughs> I wonder why Apple hasn't come up with the eye cuff, you know, where you can put the cuff on and just use your iPhone to, you know. You know, there is some sort of thing like that that, that works with your iPhone. 
my uh, diabetes uh, thing also works with my iPhone. There's a there's an app for it, and you you plug in the uh, thing, and you put the strip in your in the thing that you plug into the iPhone. Yeah. And uh, prick your finger, and and off you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. So so far, I like this new phone. Yeah. Yeah. It recognizes me every time. Well, you know, uh, it's. Yeah, it's uh, made for a guy uh, that's on radio, I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah. likes to be recognized. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to put that uh, that board. That's a big board, isn't it? Sure. If you don't want it, I mean, show, I'll, show I'll me, just show it. me again. All right. me. Here we go. Here's what he wants to give me, folks. You know something? I think I might be able to fit that in there. If I can't, I'll find a way. Okay. Okay. Just uh, one warning. One of the channels is out. Uh, or it's it's giving me some. Which, it's not which channel right. is is one of the mic channels? Not well. It, it could be. There's eight mic channels. So um, no, but there are also you know, there are also usually two channels for auxes for. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no, there's four auxes on this thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, as long yeah, I mean, send it to me. What the hell? No, I'm happy to do it. You know, uh, I am thinking yeah. of getting one that fits here, a new one, because one of my one of my faders is going bad so yeah anyway. well something happened to uh channel eight or 11 12 I, I think it's one of the stereo ones but uh anyway when i when i turned it up uh it gave me some feedback so i'm getting rid so, of so it well, there are four stereo channels you say there uh, yeah. yeah there's four stereo oh, okay. so okay. it's got a total of i think 22 mm, so you don't you, know. you just don't use that one anyway no okay let's uh Let's get down to brass taxes. Um, this president today said something that I felt was so, how can I call it? It, it, it? Just had no heart to it at all. Somebody said to him, you know, uh, the time has run out and you haven't reunited the kids with their parents yet. Uh, what are you going to do about it? He said, give them advice. And he said, what advice? And he said, tell them not to immigrate, try to sneak into the country. Otherwise, we wind up taking their kids. I thought that was so cruel. I mean, I can't, I'm, not, I'm paraphrasing him, but that's the way it came It was a quip at 7.30 in the morning. It wasn't a was quip. There was nothing helicopter. funny about that at all, Phil. No, it wasn't meant to be funny. I just don't think he thought about it. No, no that's his problem. You know, World War III could start as a result of him not thinking about it, you know. Hello, Kevin. Good evening, Alex. Good evening, everybody. Oh, don't rip me out of my mommy's womb. Elect a Republican to the Supreme Court. Is that oh, you, Phil, please. with your sound effects? Oh, <laughs> kids crying. Oh, oh, I can't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get the kid to cry? How'd you get the kid to uh, 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 cry like that do you show them a picture of yourself or something nah, or some what? free download other people do it for us <laughs> oh i see okay all right well anyway where were you we know, oh, hey. uh but anyway I, I just thought that what he said was pretty crass you know yeah and then uh then he then he's he's you know he's going to the nato meeting and he's sending out all these tweets just vilifying nato rather than and somebody at NATO finally said, you know something, you've got so little friends left, why not try to keep the ones you still have? Because his friends at NATO don't pay their fair share. Oh, they don't pay their fair share? That's a lie. It's a lie. Well, it's according a lie. to the people at NATO, they agreed with no, them and they're no, paying more. No, they, they, they agree. They, are, they, are, they are, have so many years to pay up the full amount and they are making way on doing that and it's not like we're keeping the whole operation going when when was nato formed right 1945 after, yeah i think so right after the war okay so they haven't paid their fair share since 1945 no 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 no, no, no. this is all recent stuff you know the fact is he's lying like crazy most of them have been paying up paying money into it 
uh, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, he's being he's being ridiculous. You know, you know, I I just saw a thing. He told a story to one of his crowds he goes out to because he thinks he's a stand-up comic now, and he went out and he told him this story about how he went to the Jimmy Kimmel show. Did you see this? Oh, and he held the door for he him? He held the door for him. Well, I saw Kimmel's reply to the whole thing on the air, and he said, number one, I don't meet anybody before the show, let alone Donald Trump, because I don't like to talk to people before I see them on stage. Okay? He said, it's an utter fucking lie. He said, however... One time, one, one time we did have a knock on the back door while we were getting ready to do the show, and it was Trump, and he had a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken with him, and he wanted to use the bathroom because it was kind of backing up on him. And we told him he couldn't use the bathroom because someone else was using it, so we emptied out the chicken and took a crap in the bucket. Uh, you he, said, he said, now if you believe that, then you can believe what Trump said about me. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> sure yeah. And he put the chicken back in he, the bucket. He said there's absolutely, he says, I know that Donald Trump is a liar, but he's never lied about me. And now he's lied about me and about something that either reportedly happened in my life or didn't happen in my life, and it didn't. And uh, he says, rather bizarre. Yeah. So uh, how do you feel about a president who just lies like that, Phil? Well, he's just keeping up with the Joneses and the fake news. You know, if you, know, if you got fake news and he tells some lies, well, maybe wait, he's wait, trying wait, to wait, get... Wait, if you don't like fake news, but then you... Make you your own. Put, no, make your own fake news. Aren't you going against your beliefs? Uh, you know, I don't... I, I think he was on Kimmel's show many times, and for uh, for him to say that he didn't, he never I held the door. I think according guy. to Kimmel, it was once. Yeah, but uh, isn't he the same guy that was on um, the Man Show? Yeah. So what? Well, uh, he's just a comedian. Yes, he's just a comedian. So lay off of him. Oh well. So Trump's the president. Lay off of him. Trump you know? is, is, is whoever's the president at the time is fodder for jokes. Okay. They made fun of Obama. They made fun of Bush. They made fun of Clinton. Yeah, but Obama it's, had those ears. It's what know? comedians do for a living. They so. did have big ears. You know? Yeah. Obama had big ears. He, you know, like Dumbo. You had to flip those ears. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but you forget Dumbo could fly. Yes. Yeah. And they're redoing Dumbo. Tim Burton's doing it. I left the channel. Yeah. Yeah, that's Bert, good. That's good. Do that's going to be great. Guy Peach. Guy and Peach thing? No, it's a real action one. Uh, oh, real yeah, action? Sure yeah, where are they going to get a real action elephant that flies? Oh, you're right. Yeah, well, I guess the people, yeah. I guess well, that'll be like a cartoon type thing. <laughs> You know, they show the trail looks sad because it'll take them away from the mother. They yeah, always do that. I don't know why Disney always seems to want to take all their cartoons and yeah, the live action they films. It's kind of like Trump at the border. Oh, no. So you want to eat? I, 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 think, I think that's Phil's stomach. Uh, <laughs> no, I had Italian tonight. Yeah, but, just, uh, uh, wait, you know, what, did just, you have, what did you have for dinner, Phil? Well, I I was a bad boy. See, oh. now you can't say that anymore, Phil. I know. I, I, it, it, it's widowmaker time, okay? You can't say I was a bad boy tonight. There's no yeah. such thing as being a bad boy anymore. There's oh, well, there's either I, I, there, it, you, uh, there's either dead bad boy <laughs> or well, I had a, live uh, good a boy. Stroni soup. Uh, uh, linguine and clams, oh, uh, they call it Elvangle, and white sauce. And then I had uh, bread oh, okay. and coffee. Oh, okay. And several pieces of bread. Why didn't you I, wash that down with some, I like, the butter uh, on it? With, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just eat cubes of butter and, you know? Well, I did with the bread. Yeah. Uh, see? Oh, God. 
I, 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 on my diet, it's I could have the butter. It's, it's the bread I, I took, couldn't have. So I, I put the butter on my finger and what? I took two glipizides uh, so that my sugar wouldn't go up that much. Oh, but it God. Did. You know, Phil... You know, one of these days I'm going to get a... I won't know when you die. Faye's not going to call me. Yes, oh, call everybody. Uh, he said, you yes, know. Patrick. We do miss him. I hate to say it. Hey, 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 Patrick had his hand up. Oh. Well, um, I would suggest until you have your widow maker taken care of, uh, you, yes, lay off, of you, you lay off of sex you lay off from any sort of other physical exertion and basically drink water, tea, and coffee and don't yeah. eat anything. Just yeah. drink water, tea, and coffee and after your dinner and lunch, breakfast, and that's, yeah. that's it. Um, yeah. Steak! Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I've been pretty good for the last week or so. Uh, uh, chicken and salad and uh, you know, yeah, and I haven't had a steak, but I'm really not in the mood for a steak. But I was, I, I had to say goodbye to the Italian food. <laughs> you, know? you had to say goodbye time. to it? You had to say goodbye to it like it was a friend of yours? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and, and because it was such a good friend, I ate it. Yes, yeah, well, that's, that's what you do to friends, right? Uh, right. Yes, Patrick. No, you don't have to give it up. You just need to do it in moderation. Once you get your widow maker taken care of, yeah. you can eat anything you want. Just not Italian every day. Just not, you know, it's like any any diet. Or I mean, Alex, I'm sure you've uh, adjusted your diet so you can have a little bit of something here or there, correct? Uh, yes. I um, Last night I, I had one of my, my f five net carb uh, protein bars, and today mm -hmm. it gave me the trots big time. Wow. So I can't eat that anymore. But what it's good for is I love getting the trots and then getting on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what it's good for. I think it took you notice pounds. much of a difference. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. But um, and then I took some Imodian, so now I'm going to be plugged up for the next two days. But uh, uh, you know, I mean, I just. I just find that um, the low carb diet, which was all meat and you know and uh, stuff like that, uh, was very good for me because uh, it did help get my uh, irritable bowel syndrome in check for some reason. Yeah. And the uh, probiotics. The probiotics helped, but uh, I noticed with the diet that I immediately started uh, not having the problems I had had with IBS, uh, but. You know, people say, how can you eat all that steak and don't you get... I, I don't have any heart problems. My heart's... The, the, the thing that works the best on me is my heart right now. You know, well, my heart's not strong. Wood. The problem is, is all the arteries that go to it are clogged. No, well, that's uh, that's <laughs> a heart problem then. And when, when you die of the widow maker, they don't say, hey, you died of an artery. Well, the guy said that this has been going on for a long time because what had happened... Was well, even though it was somebody, 100 percent kind of doctors? Uh, do you, what kind of doctors do you go to that nobody caught this earlier? That's true. Oh yes, you're going to Kaiser, <laughs> doctor-assisted yeah. suicide. Unless, well, unless you complain, you somebody else's job. <laughs> I didn't have a heart attack. I didn't have a stroke. And you know, normally you have one of those. They bring you in on a stretcher, and then they know that you need a bypass or that you need uh, a stent. Uh, but because I didn't have that, I was just a little short of breath with extreme, uh, 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 you know, uh, workout. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if I if I did something that was considerable, uh, ex you know, exercise wise or physically, uh, I, mm -hmm. I was short of breath at a certain point. Like but you couldn't breathe, Phil. Or hmm? You couldn't catch your breath. Uh, yeah, no, I really couldn't. You know, I go to the I, gym and I do the bike thing, and I'm I'm never out of breath from it. Never well, out of breath. I can I can go on a treadmill. I I can do six, eight, ten miles, uh, and I wouldn't be out of breath. I'd hardly break break a sweat. But whatever it was, you know, if you incline it, uh, then all of a sudden, uh, I had enough. I, I walked up a driveway that was extremely steep. And, uh, and under construction. 
And by the time I got from the street to the top of that driveway, which was quite a distance, uh, it took me five minutes to gain my breath back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's uh, what, do you know anything about this, Gavin? Have you had any ever had any heart problems or anything? Me, no, but I'm starting to worry. <laughs> oh, have you had a shortness of breath or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I'm starting to think about some of the stuff you're talking about because I this last weekend I was I took the bike for a ride. And it's been hot. And yeah. I took the bike for a ride downtown, you know, because they had the uh, mini rally downtown. And I got kind of lightheaded and crap. It could be the heat, though, too. And, uh, I, I, I ended up coming home and sitting down on the couch. My, really? uh, you know, I told you my last week when I went to the doctor, my my uh, blood pressure was at, what what did I say, 97.63 or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. He said yeah. not to worry about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I've been taking my blood pressure, and it hasn't been that low yet. But I went to the doctor today, and they said, no, nah, don't worry about that too much, but keep an eye on it. So it's yeah. been up. Folks, welcome to up. the program that should be better known as This is What It's Like to Get Old. Ding yeah. dong. Yeah, then, uh, the only uh, one here that isn't it, old is Patrick. He's, what, 38, Patrick? No, 43. But yeah, I'm well, 43. It. 43 going on 57. Anyway, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, uh, I'm going tomorrow to pick up my hearing aid that crapped out on me last week. What? And I, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm using the phone right now. And the, the only good thing was there is three weeks left on my warranty on the fucking hearing aid. Mm -hmm. So that's the first time a warranty has ever worked for me on it anything yeah usually dies like a, the day after or you know three days after so yeah. uh but that's my only health issue at this point I so. did, I, i've told you the story about the guy who uh who was telling his friend i just got this new hearing aid and it it is the greatest hearing aid they make it is it it's is cold. just wonderful and it's perfect and everything and the guy says uh what kind is it and he said three o'clock <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you remember the hearing aids of old? It was one of those big cones like you'd have on a Victrola. Yeah. And uh, you, you put it up the ear. Hey, what you say? Well, you know, the thing is, the hardest kind of people to talk to, like Jack has hearing aids. And his girlfriend is saying, we really got to get him the state of the art. He said, because these things, you can, you can tell they, they turn them up and they squeal. You get the feedback, but they don't hear the feedback. You know, and... and uh, you have to kind of lean in to talk to them. So these hearing aids, you, you, gotta, you really got to put out a lot of money and get a good one if you're going to get a hearing aid. You know the benefit to hearing aids? Is you can turn them off. Yeah, well, that's, there's and that. you don't have to listen. <laughs> that's it's called selective hearing. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Kevin, uh, what they gave me was a uh, stress EKG. Uh, where they yeah, put I've had one of those pill. done. Oh, okay, and... That was anything. a while ago. Yes. Well, I had one of those. They put me in a room with Marjorie. Yeah. And uh, I get one of those every day. With and then wife. and then they they t took uh, took an EKG. <laughs> Man, I tell yeah. you about that. I, I told you about that nuclear stress test I took that made my heart beat like a little rabbit. It was the most uncomfortable yeah, thing yeah, I've ever yeah. had. Yeah, yeah. They did that to me about two years ago. That was the weirdest freaking thing. Yeah, I mean, you really feel like you're going to die, don't you? You sit there in a chair, and all of a sudden he says, okay, well, here it comes. And all of a sudden you feel like you're you're running 100 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. And and you feel like I was worried I was going to have a heart attack. And I, I was according too, yeah. to them, occasionally somebody does. And then yeah. they turn it down, and all of a sudden you're going, whoa. Yeah. Uh, uh, Patrick? Yeah, I, I've had that done, too, except it was when I went septic. Oh, that great. Heart beating like that, so, yeah. Well, uh, here, here uh, you know, um, after I was through, I, I think I've told you this story, the doctor says to me, I said, so uh, I'm okay? And I said, yeah, we didn't, uh, we didn't see anything uh, to be of concern. Uh, because my doctor sent me right over because I said I was having some trouble breathing or something that was a sign and he wanted to make sure. And so I went over and I had this uh, nuclear stress test, which took hours. And then after it was all over, I said to the doctor, so am I okay? He says, 
looks pretty good. We'll have to check it all out, but you know, I, I can't see that you've got any problems. I said, any, uh, any uh, advice for me? He said, yeah, don't get near pregnant women for the next 48 hours. Yeah. I went, what? He said, yeah, you're radioactive. I asked yeah. them about that, and they, uh, when I had the nuclear stress test, and they said, no, that's, that's not true. Well, my doctor that took, gave it to me said, don't get near a pregnant woman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he yeah, also had a bunch of heads on stakes. Yeah, I think it's a little joke. Well, to he have. would rattle some bones to make me better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. Actually, um, when I had my uh, spinal surgery, I had to wear it. It was I forget what it's called, but it was um, it was to help with bone healing, and it was battery operated, and um, so it did some sort of uh, increased healing. But anyway, whenever I'd have it on. Uh, it was like for three, three or four hours a day, I could not go anywhere near pregnant women. Wow. For that reason. So I, uh, in the apartment that I lived in, there were two women, I believe, that were expecting. So when I wore it, I just stayed inside. I didn't even go outside with the possibility that they would even come by to, you know, say, yeah. hi, how you doing? So that's not necessarily a fake thing. It might be, uh, Phil, that maybe they used a different type of dye with you, you, you know. That's cool. yeah. Uh, near pregnant women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's Googling it. Yeah, Google it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it came out of a vial that was nuclear and all that stuff, but they didn't say nothing like that to me. Yeah. No, it's, it's just nuclear. a little... Little bit they give you. It's nuclear. 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 Amazing. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see here. Anything else happening in the news that we should be talking about? Uh, uh, of course, the Supreme Court nominee. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen there? Eh, he's probably going to get in. You know. Oh, easily. Well, not easily. Probably by one vote. Well, of course, you know, that, that's, uh, that's the not... Democrats are obstructing. Uh, oh, wait, a minute, Jim, you know. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you use the word obstruction. This is not obstructing. It's, it's, it's the process by which we, what we go through in deciding whether someone is going to be or not going to be a Supreme Court justice. It's not and obstruction. They're, and they're doing it based on party affiliation? Well, uh, what, are the, what are the Republicans doing? Well, uh, what they're are the, voting. What are the Republicans doing? They're doing it based it's, on it's, party it's affiliation. It's up to them right now. Think back it's, six it's up years. to them right now to, to place a uh, uh, thing. Well, go back to Merritt Garland, but uh, there was there was a reason for that. No, there uh, wasn't. No, there wasn't. You know, there wasn't they, a, could, they could it, not have known. There wasn't a legitimate reason to not look at Merritt Garland. There was not a legitimate reason. The reasoning they gave was erroneous. There have been presidents who, during their last term, in the year, last year in office, have nominated people for the Supreme Court. Well, uh, there were some exceptions. They were, but, they were uh, looking for an excuse. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, Merritt Garland will be nominated uh, if the Dems take the Senate. Uh, uh, the next, the next, uh, the next person that comes up to fill a, a seat in. Uh, in the uh, you know in the Supreme Court, I think uh, they're going to have to go to a guy like him, and that's that would all that would be the only thing that goes through, hmm. and it'll still be a five to four court the way it is now. The way it is now with Kennedy. Yeah, uh, Patrick. Joe Biden introduced the idea of no midterm um, or or end of term. Uh, oh, that's right. The Biden. Term. During Reagan, it would and uh, it would call it like the Biden rule. Yeah, but yeah. It, it wasn't it wasn't that, a, it wasn't a rule that was set in stone. It was just no, a theory. No, but that was it was a suggestion, and that was where the Republican picked it up. And this is where I like to say but, to but did he do it? Did he do the rule? No, he did not do the rule. Relax, relax. He did not do it. Uh, it, it, it okay. They didn't block anybody. 
So, hey, so, you, Scott, you're going to wind up like me. Relax. Yeah, yeah. Serenity so, now. He didn't do anything. <laughs> he didn't do anything. Now we got the Mitch rule that they cannot have a, a president nominate anybody in an election year. So we got the Mitch McDonald rule now. Yeah. Celebrate. Yeah, I, well, I mean, it, 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 yeah, yes, Patrick, you were going to say something. I'm afraid to now. <laughs> no, don't uh, do, do not have any fear. There's nothing that irritates me more than not being able to finish something where I was just going to say this is why I like to remind my friends on both sides of the aisle be careful of what you wish for and be careful of what you do because it can come back to haunt you. And yeah. it's just like these executive orders and things like that. One president puts them in, the next one can get rid of it just as quickly. And it's the same with this Biden rule. It was suggested by a Democrat during a Republican thing. It was brought up by the Republican during a Democrat thing. So, you know, I mean, just be careful because history is there. And right. you know that both sides will dig deep to find anything that, to make an excuse to do anything, and that's where that came from. So, no, it's not a rule set in stone, but it's certainly something that was brought up to slap in the face the Democrat, and it went done. So, you know, tough shit. Yeah. Well, I don't agree with it, but tough shit. All I'm saying is, is that uh, I think Merrick Garland should have gotten a decent uh, uh, hearing. Okay. Sure. Uh, I, I think that what and and he wasn't, you know, he he they were taking a big risk. I mean, if Trump hadn't become president, they would then, you know, not have taken somebody who would have been much more of a moderate than anybody that Hillary Clinton would put up for the for the. Uh, Hillary might have uh, uh, suggested Merrick Garland just as a, uh, uh, you know, yeah. if she. Yeah. How, how well, Mitch you, was on record as saying he wouldn't even allow Hillary to nominate anyone for four years. He's on record as saying that. Well, that would be safe. So <laughs> why do we even have the Senate involved in it anyway? Well, Just maybe, let the maybe, guy do what he maybe wants. Maybe they need. Hello, Jack. How are you? I don't know if you can keep your picture. It keeps flopping. I'm gonna try to keep my picture, you know, Sabi. Yeah. I, I'd like to point out something to my dear friend Phil Meyer. You know, if the Democrats had some balls, they would propose adding three more people to the Supreme Court. I take that back. Four. They did. Uh, under I, they I went from six to nine. Uh, yeah. Well, the thing is, it's been as many as ten, as few as six. There's nothing in the Constitution, nothing in statute law that says how many judges will be on the Supreme Court. What do they pay a Supreme Court judge? Have no idea. I don't know. I, 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 more than uh, more than uh, uh, um, more than Tony's uh, uncle pays him. So you're yeah. right about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm bring your family in the bar. Yeah, but you got to wear a black robe. Yeah. You know? uh, I would have uh, done. I should have well, seen. Well, you don't know what they're wearing underneath those robes. They're nothing. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts tomorrow. Screw it. Well, you know, but I just I I think that. Maybe we have to revisit uh, the how we allow a president to maybe take away from the president the ability to nominate a, a Supreme Court judge. I don't. I don't know what that. Is. Maybe you should take it, it away from the Senate. To, why can't they vote on it, Alex? Everybody. Well, uh, I, you know, for, to begin with, I don't like the endless term. Yeah, that's not good either. I think there should be like a ten-year term limit or something like that. Uh, I, I, I think the fact that, that for instance, the creep that's going to get in now, no matter which creep it is, because it's going to be a creep because it's going to be somebody that, that, <laughs> that's that, uh, that tr Trump likes, uh, will be could be in that job for the next 40 years. I mean, that's too long. And, and for that to tone the law, especially, you know, if you figure that times change and uh, uh, needs change, and the court has to adapt to that. Uh, you're going to have a bunch of people who can't adapt to that. You well, see, you're going to have you're going to have a Supreme Court that's too old for the room. 
They said that uh, the guy that they just nominated, and I don't know why I'm blanking out on his name like you did the governor of New York, but uh, the uh, they said that he had changed his mind about something, and uh, and so the commentators were saying that's a good thing because if somebody's going to be in the court for 30 or 40 years, you'll want them to be able to change with the times and not just be so set in their ways that they'll never change. Yeah. Brett Kavanaugh, by the way. Kavanaugh. Yeah, yeah. Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, Jackanoff. <laughs> Brett Jackanoff, yeah, yeah. Good, you started the ball rolling there on that one, Scott. Oh, look, he... He's uh, a nice guy. You know, uh, he, he th his parents were nice. He's actually, uh, they, I read something today that he's the poorest guy or the, you know, uh, to, to become a... Um, Supreme Court justice. Really? Yes. He's not wealthy. What's and, all that noise? Uh, oh, that was, I'm sorry. That was me. I put a fake oh. But, you know, so anyway, he, he might turn out to be okay. No. And, and just uh, no. judge on the law no, no, and I, not I, try to uh, rule from the bench. I, can I tell you something? I took, a, lo I took a look at him. I can judge people by looking at him. And he's yeah. a creep. You know, he is going, like he's going to rule from the bench. The court, has always, do that. the court has always been political, and it always should be. Not really. You know, they should be uh, interpreters of the Constitution. Uh, but then, 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 uh, you know, uh, I, I, then you're not, you're dreaming. Okay? You're dreaming. Uh, of course they should. That's the job. Uh, but you know, I I just think there's something there's something inherently wrong with a court system which is affected by political tides and political fortunes. If you believe it's affected by political, but it tides. is. I mean, you didn't see him going out and trying to find some middle ground person. No, I thought the guy he picked was a middle ground person. No. Worked for the but Bush. Well, he's uh, White House. He's a middle for your side. For our side, he's a fascist. <laughs> yes, Patrick. There's nothing wrong with being a fascist, brother. But let's come out and admit it. I admit I'm a socialist. Nothing wrong with being a fascist as long as we all show up every day for the fight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. Uh, join me for the fight that's coming up at, after the top of the hour. Yeah. So I don't know if my a, heart. That's can a plug take for it. Jack's show, by the way. A that's a, a blatant, that's a blatant plug. Blatant plug. Yes, uh, uh, Patrick. Beautiful segue. Yeah. By the way, Patrick, yes? Um, I think it's a great pick, and here's why. Because as soon as it was announced, there were already pre-made signs. I know, you're right. I saw that. Yeah. You know what? Fill in the name. And you know what? The left went absolutely batshit over it. <laughs> Just be, before it was even three seconds out of the gate, so they had they must have had all four nominees. He made sign, and then when I saw Cory Booker speaking, there was some white girl behind him that looked like she was ready to take off like a rocket ship. Her <laughs> eyes kept bulging and she kept screaming. And I will I will have to agree with you, Patrick. The the. Uh, uh, naysayers were a little premature in saying nay uh, before they even know, knew who the who the uh, contestant. I'm they saying the contestant about, was because they, he ran this like a game show, like a like an episode of The Apprentice, you know, in rolling out the new guy and you know who's going to be the winner. I'll announce it tonight at nine o'clock. You know, it was good and, TV. Hmm? It was good TV. I waited for it. I didn't watch it. Didn't I watch didn't watch it, it at it. all. You know, I I knew it'd be some it'd be some douchebag. You know, boy, Libs forgot about the kids at the border real quick as soon as you had some other squirrel to chase. Hey, <laughs> listen, we're talking about we're talking about the the vestige, perhaps the last vestige that keeps a traitor under control in our country. Yeah, you mean like Comey? <laughs> no, like I like Trump. I'm sorry. The man's in the pocket of the Russians. Nothing wrong with being in the bag as long as you admit that that's where you are and that you're going to do the bidding of your financial masters. 
Well, we'll see how he does next week with uh, Comrade. Uh, comrade, uh, what's his name in Russia? He's uh, got to take his orders and come home. They don't call they, themselves comrades any longer. No? But the fact that he, he doesn't like any of our allies, but he loves this dictator, you know, this criminal, this mobster, who is nice. He's, right. like, He's human. He's people, man. If, if they on. truly, if they truly said how much he was worth, he would be worth. He would be the richest man on the planet. Oh, yeah. Somewhere Probably. around seventy-three billion dollars. Okay. But that's Phil's kind of leader. And that's because the, what he did was the oligarchs. Uh, he sent a message to them. He took one of them, threw him in jail, and said, "If any of the rest of you want to be thrown in jail, uh, you can go ahead and let me do it." Either that or you can give me a percentage of what you make. And that's why he's worth $73 billion. He's, Jack he's puppet master. Take... He's puppet master. <laughs> Very good. But, Alex, the thing that really bothers me was what Mitch McConnell said yesterday about let's give this man a fair chance. Didn't believe in doing it for the last guy that was. Oh, by the way, to... Mitch McConnell was against Kavanaugh. He was against Kavanaugh, and then today he was sucking his dick in the office. Yeah. Well, a good dick is hard to find sometimes. No, but I mean, he was he was warning against Kavanaugh that he wasn't conservative enough, and blah 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 blah. And no, he should not be the pick. So and so should be the pick. And then when they did Kavanaugh, and he came to the office, Mitch McConnell says, "Great nominee, great nominee. Fuck you, Mitch. Yes, Patrick." <laughs> I. I agree with Jack. That, I mean, it, it it's going to be tit for tat regardless. And and I agree with you, Alec, that Merrick Garland should have at least gotten a hearing. And even if the Republican never planned on giving him a fair shake at even getting it, he should have been able to have gone through the process. It, it's, of it, it's like the old it's saying. Important. It's like the old saying goes. If you can't be sincere, at least fake it. Exactly. <laughs> hey, brother, they they should have borked them, you know, the same way they did to uh, to uh, bork. Uh, I, I, got, I got no problem with that. Let's play hardball. The political highway is long and broad, and there's scar tissue and blood enough to go around for everybody to get some. You're very graphic. <laughs> well, no, I, I think I think it's time that the uh, the Democrats learn to play dirty ball, you know. Uh, yeah, they do, but they do it in a real low low well, life they, way. They, they go well, out yeah. and they they yell at people in restaurants and uh, well, well, they try to hurt them. your side doesn't do the same damn thing because they have too much class to do that. No, no, guys, no, 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 the, no. The, his side, his his, his his side when they disagree with people, Jack. Take mm -hmm. a car and drive it down the road where yeah. the protesters are. Oh, I thought that's that what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 And, and they yeah. use their bought and paid for army, known as the police in most cities, to enforce their positions. Well, Cirrus, Cirrus uh, has bought and paid for it's, all of those signs that they came out. George Soros. Soros. Good. No, but, but, but Patrick Patrick is right. How about you, Coke brothers, buying some more? We the have. Others don't like Trump. Here's the thing I'm going to tell you right now. Here's the thing I'm really afraid of. Mm -hmm. We are at a tipping point in this country where we could either become, as my doctor, my heart doctor said today before she said, Jack, cool down. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, we're at a point with a guy who has us like the frog in the water, you know, and the, he's turning the heat up. We could be in a dictatorship in a, in a couple of years. It's interesting. Uh, it's, it's interesting that some of our former allies. The sky is falling, Jack. The sky uh, is falling. Oh, so what may happen, and I'm for this. Uh, we, may decide to, we may decide to break this country up into four or five entities, and we all get to go on about our merry damn way like we should. Well, uh, Jack, you better, that, you better have a more democratic sound. You, you better run because you got a show to do. Yeah, I got to get set. Right bye. after this. Um, bye. Uh, anyway, uh, th you know, th th at least we waited towards the end of the show to have the fight. You know? Hey, do you have insurance on Jack? Do I have insurance on Jack? Yeah, you know, so. key man insurance or something. So if he has a heart attack, uh, you know, you can well, get... Yeah, he can't even figure out how to kill Skype. This is Mr. <laughs> Technology. <laughs>
Uh, Jack, are you going away? Uh, uh, I'll tell you, I'll hang up on him. <laughs> he, he's, he probably closed the wrong thing. I'll do it for him. <laughs> what? He probably closed uh, something, but not his camera. Oh, there, right he, there he went. There we you go. He, yeah, we lost him. Okay, good. Let me, let me remove person from group. Hey, listen, all you guys. Gosh, this has been fun tonight. We've been all over the place, and thank God we waited to the end to have Scott go apoplectic. Uh, that wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't that bad. You to bad? Come on, buddy. <laughs> Bring it on. on. Go do it over on Jack's show. Phil, thank you so much. Uh, Patrick, love you, man. Uh, Kevin, oh, always tough. great having you here. Scott, good to have you back and happy, uh, you know, wedding, whatever that son was. Son in law hood. Son in father in law hood. <laughs> uh, you, now, now they can make father in law jokes about you. And finally, Patrick, I mean, Tony. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Will everybody give a big wave goodbye to the folks out there? Okay. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. And that's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, they will uh, hopefully all be back, and you might even be one of them uh, tomorrow night. Right after uh, uh, Damian Chaplin is here with the exchange. Uh, I will be back again tomorrow night. Uh, by the way, at the next is the intersection. After that is connections at, at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I'll see you tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, by all means, tell her I love her. Okay, bye. Bye.